This video is going to jump right into my international moves series. I'm so excited to share this with everybody watching because it's capturing my five years of moves abroad from South Africa to Germany with my internship at Adidas to my move to Sweden with Volvo Cars and the graduate program to finding my permanent position and everything wrapped up in that space. I knew absolutely nothing about living overseas, moving abroad, what it would take, the mindset that I would need. This video is the most basic of what you will need to know within the initial phase of an international job search. So the recruitment cycles, job searching itself and mindset, because without mindset, it's going to be a struggle. There are difficulties that you'll face and you have to handle them. The first thing to realize with recruitment cycles is that recruitment cycles differ across countries and continents. I had applied for my internship with Adidas and I got there and realized that all the other interns had already applied for the Adidas trainee program. So I missed out on applying for the trainee program and potentially having my next job lined up the minute I finished my internship. That small mistake cost me about 12 months within my early career phase. Of course, that's only applicable to more early career programs, but recruitment cycles are still important if you're looking for just a job anywhere. If you apply for work in June, July, August within Europe, you're probably not gonna get so many hits because that is kind of the time that is petering down for summer. And during summer vacation, pretty much all of Europe just shuts down, uh, no comment. The same is South Africa in December. December, South Africa basically shuts down. You're not gonna get a lot of hits on any of your applications during that time. So if you know when these recruitment cycles are, when the major holidays are within the location you're looking for, you will have better luck and you know when to invest energy into the process. You're going to need to consider your energy investment in this job searching process, because as we'll get into mindset, it is often difficult to get these international roles. They're really competitive. There's a lot of international candidates that would want to actually get into companies that provide sponsorship for visas and work permits and so on. So energy investment is crucial. Then job searching itself is different if you're coming from abroad. I also realized in my internship at Adidas that you get certain search results on the search engine that you're using for the country that you're located in. And this is obvious, of course, when you're shopping for something, you're only gonna get results from the area that you live in. It's the same for job searching. So you're not going to get those international potential roles if you are searching from your home country. If you want exposure to more jobs in other locations, you're going to need to put in some other strategies. One way of doing this is just making a list of the companies, the brands, the things that you use daily that are multinational, that are fairly large, going onto their career pages to look at the roles they have available. Most of these companies will put at the bottom of that recruitment offering page, whatever, whether it is hiring international people, if you need to have work permit or sponsorship for that specific location. And that is another very important thing for energy investment. If they say they're not going to sponsor permits or visas, you might still have a tiny chance if you're an exceptional candidate, but most of the time, it's not gonna be worth the energy that you're going to invest in that application for applying to that place. Find the companies that are willing to move excellent candidates, that are willing to move people who are invested in the brand and put your energy into those companies. The other way that you can begin to search for international opportunities is by using a VPN. So using a VPN, will open up a couple of different job boards within different areas. When I was doing my internship with Adidas, I was searching on graduate land. When I got back to South Africa, tried my search on graduate land, no go. They wouldn't let people from outside of Europe apply or even look, sorry, for roles within Europe. It, that is a whole side story. I ended up sending the CEO an email. We had a bit of a back and forth. And I understood the reasons, which is that there weren't that many opportunities for international candidates on that job page. So they didn't want to disappoint people. But in my case, you know, that is what I was looking for. And I ended up using a VPN to do the same search and I got my job with Volvo Cars. So it just goes to show that you need to have different strategies for accessing these resources if they do put up blockers. Apparently now they don't block people from outside of Europe on that specific job board but the principle could still hold to other job boards that are available. 
So another way you can actually go about looking for jobs is to identify a specific location that is good for you for whatever reason, whether it's money orientated, whether you want your foreign passport, maybe it's the work-life quality, and then apply for roles in that space. You can then optimize your search engine, whether it's Google or whatever platform you're using to search in those locations for roles. You might find that you'll get a host of opportunities and even companies that are open to relocating people. Another thing that just crossed my mind is some countries have a specific lack of talent or resources. So you could do a quick search on what countries are looking for what type of skill and then apply specifically to those countries because they are looking for maybe what you offer. So there are a whole lot of strategies that you can go about searching for international work. You, the searcher, have to do it. And the reason I say this is because a lot of these multinational companies don't realize the limitations of their advertisement. They don't realize the limitations of how they interact with people of different cultures or what these other environments are even like. So they aren't aware of the recruiting cycle in South Africa. So it is you, the person who is wanting to do this journey, to take the step to move internationally, that has to put in that extra work because these multinational companies are not going to do it for you. The last part of all of this is mindset. Mindset, I will always preach about in many of my videos because it is so important for these hard things that you have to do. You need to know your why, what you are doing this for. That's going to get you through the ups and downs of this job search process. It is difficult when you're just looking for a regular job. When you are looking for a job abroad, it's even more difficult, especially if you're like me and you don't really have much experience of looking for international work you do not have a foreign passport that's going to make it an easy, easily accessible thing. So there are going to be dips. In those dips, you need to come back to the reason you're doing this for, and that is going to keep you going in this process. I had to choose between a graduate position in South Africa with a company in a city that I didn't really want to live in, or the possibility of an internship with Adidas. I hadn't even got the job. You know, I still had another interview round to get through, but... Because my why was that I wanted to work internationally, that the spark had been lit in my head at risk. And I'm glad I stuck to my guns. Obviously, it worked out for me. I had a good feeling about my process with Adidas. But that allowed me to make a really tough decision. Even though I wanted stability, I wanted work. Part of me wanted to continue to live in South Africa. Another part of me knew that this opportunity with Adidas or whatever company I could have been interviewing with at the time was so rare that I had to go for it. I had to try, even though it was a risk. If you have a why, it will make these tough decisions easier. It will take some of the anxiety and stress off of that specific moment, and then you can make a choice more clearly. You can be more confident in what you have decided. That wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be making more videos on this train of thought. The next one coming up is going to be about smashing an interview. So applicable to international living and regular work. I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe, like, comment on things if I've missed anything out or if there's anything you want to know in more detail, I can make another video about it because I have a crazy amount of videos that I'm going to be making this year and I'm excited for you to watch them. I'm excited for my skills to improve. See you then.